LaCour is an icon of the union movement here in, uh, in Louisiana. Nat was a person that had vision and he was before his time with a lot of things. As a high school teacher in New Orleans in the early 70s, Nat LaCour saw the need for teachers to speak with one voice. And as president of UTNO, Nat took on the Herculean task of gaining collective bargaining. That was a time when getting collective bargaining was not popular. And it was a time in the Deep South where one of the things the power establishment would do was work to divide us. Nat would not allow that to happen. And Nat LaCour stood up before that school board and said, I'm the president of the United Teachers of New Orleans. And that school board looked at that audience and they saw African American teachers and white teachers, male and female, young and old. The whole audience was just peppered with signs. There was no way that school board could divide us. And when they saw that, they knew that Nat LaCour represented all the teachers. And we got collective bargaining that night. The contribution that Nat's union made to not just teachers in, in the state of Louisiana, but to all workers and making sure that the value and, and benefits of collective bargaining were clear is just a legend. The power of, of the union led by Nat LaCour uh, has made life a lot better for many workers in the state of Louisiana. He recognized the importance, in my opinion, of the struggles that the other facets of organized labor had, the building construction trades department, the industrial department, the maritime department. He spoke in behalf of those issues, so he wasn't a single-minded type of labor leader, and that's why he was respected so much. While establishing himself as a community leader in New Orleans, Nat was also a rising star on the AFT Executive Council. We would refer to him as Lil Al. Al Schenkel was his mentor. We knew if something was coming down the pike in New York that we would soon have it in New Orleans. So here we are, first collective bargaining local in the South. We've got a health and welfare fund, we have a, we had a teacher center, we have all these things that are kind of unheard of and you know, like we're an anomaly in this part of the country. He wanted quality instruction for all children and he wanted quality teachers in the classrooms and that's why we came up with the teacher center so that we could improve our teachers. Those were his dreams. No contracts. No work. Erase the board. Erase the board. Clean sweep. Clean sweep. He understood politics, and he was able to communicate the importance of getting involved to his members, which consequently equated to political power. Political power, then he was able to influence school board elections and city council elections, uh, even gubernatorial elections. One of the more effective programs uh, was doing the uh, David Duke campaign to uh, lead the state of Louisiana. Nat and I and a number of other people just really realized that to have this kind of political leadership reflect a state like Louisiana was not in the best interest of workers in general. And in all the places that we were operating, I think we had 12 parishes, we were very, very, very successful. So that was a big thing for him. In 1998, Sandy Feldman invited Nat to move from New Orleans to become executive vice president of the AFT. And when Ed McElroy became AFT president, Nat was a natural choice for secretary treasurer. He knows the organization intuitively, and the secretary treasurer position is that kind of a position. And as you put the budget together every year, you sort of shape the organization. That's what Nat was doing. And let's give a warm AFT welcome to our newest AFT locals and the 28 states where they were organized. Welcome! All through his career, Nat's been a key guy on the organizing strategies of the AFT. When we saw that it wasn't happening to the, at the level we thought it should be happening, um, Nat was uh, asked by Sandy at the time and, and by me and a, a secretary treasurer to chair this committee uh, on organizing. We are developing a national organizing plan. We are developing strategic organizing plans at the state and local level. Now his chairmanship of that effort and that committee, the AFT, within this two year period, will have the greatest growth that we've had in our history. We want to provide quality education to all children. Underline, 
double underline, asterisk. That's important. But I always thought of him as being as much a teacher as a leader. Uh, people don't know that he's got a master's degree and he was a, a science teacher. Don't ask him to help you with homework because it's going to take all night. And my niece just recently found that out. She's like, Papa has gone on and on and on and on. I already got it. I said, I know. Tried to tell you. As a labor leader, Nat recognized his responsibility to use that power to affect change, not only in the United States, but around the world. Nat LaCour uh, you know, participated very heavily in the activities leading up to the independence movement in South Africa. After independence came, the, the AFT continued to participate very actively in programs to strengthen the uh, South African trade union movement. We are here today in support of our children. And we are here today in support of our own economic well-being. And, and we do not apologize at all. Nat is a labor leader. He realizes that the AFT is a labor organization and its responsibility is to represent its members and to represent uh, the work they do and the institutions in which they work. And that's an integral part of that. I think one of the most important things he taught me was what good leadership is and what it looks like and what it means to be dedicated and committed to an organization. Postcard campaigns, street rallies, phone banks, get out the vote effort. We need to do more of this. We need to redefine what we mean by organizing. It's also turning members into activists.